Amy. It was Amy. That's a good email. You've got some announcements you want to make? Uh, I do. Uh, the first thing, uh, Ms. Thomas is on her way. So, Ms. Chairman, if I can have a point of privilege during the meeting to acknowledge her when she comes in. And uh, that's Ms. Amy Thomas, our employee of the month, as a bus driver. She's also uh, also works as the receptionist here at Woodbury Grammar School. So, Ms. Amy is does a lot. And uh, we'd like to recognize her. And Ms. Black would like to recognize her when she comes in. So, she is on her way. I think she thinks she's in trouble. So, we'll... Act like when she comes in, we'll just act like she's in trouble. <laughs> but she's not in trouble. It's a good thing. So you just won't but I, if I say just move along with the agenda, since you won't link the agenda, and as soon as she comes in, we'll recognize her. That would be my recommendation, Mr. Chairman. All right. Take attendance, Mr. Curtis. Mr. McMackins. Here. Ms. Duggan. Here. Mr. Mullins. Here. Ms. Thomas. Here. Chairman Fan. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have five here, none absent. You have quorum, sir. All right. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? A motion. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second's been made. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Moa and seconded by Ms. Duggan to approve the agenda of the October 8, 2020 meeting of the board. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. Item number two, the consent agenda. Approve the minutes of the September 10th meeting. Approve Preston Tomlinson as the middle school boys basketball coach. You guys want to separate those? We'd like to do them together. I'm fine with doing them together. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. I second. Motion's been made and seconded. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Fan, seconded by Mr. Mullins to approve the consent agenda. A, approve the minutes of the September 10th, 2020 meeting of the board. B, approve Preston Tomlinson as a middle school boys basketball coach and C, no boys uh, bus trips. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes. No nays, and do note that Mr. Knowles is in the building. If, so please tell Mr. Preston he's got his background check ready to go. So, All right, uh, item number three. I don't guess Mike's with us tonight, but he did address this at the uh, uh, workshop the other night. You guys ain't got any questions? You want to ask Mr. Curtis about that? I think you made made sure, Mr. Mr. Chairman, that uh, he talked about that. In fact, he uh, texted me right afterwards and and said uh, he said the board didn't ask a whole lot of questions, but I think everybody understands what's occurred. We have we borrowed 2.1 million dollars. We've only used 1.8 of that, so you do have uh, much much more than the 19,000 dollars we needed. So to come within you know 19,000 dollars of a $1.8 million project is very, very good. And we've had to use a little bit of a contingency because of a few other things, but uh, I did talk with Diane. We don't have to change anything. All we need to do is to make sure that, that she knows that we have approved this and then they will take it from there and go from there. Correct, Douglas, anything that I missed there in the 19,000? Okay, it'll go. And it won't even have to be from capital outlay. It will be from the one point or two point one million dollars. So, from that roof uh, contingency that we have. So, anybody got any questions? Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I'll make a second. Second's been made. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. McMack and seconded by Ms. Thomas to approve the use of contingency fund number five of $33,174 and a change order request for $19,186 as change order number one for Cannon County High School roof drain inserts project. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. Okay. Uh, you guys want to talk to Marshall again? You need to? Okay. 
Good. Do I have a motion to approve the calendar? I'll make a motion to approve the calendar for 2021-2022. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? A second. Second's been made. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Mullen, and seconded by Ms. Thomas to approve the 2021-2022 school calendar as attached. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, we have a special person with us tonight. And it's my honor and my privilege to not insult, take to insult. You are the employee of the month. So, oh, Amy, if I could somebody grab my phone up there and just write it. I'll put a little bit of it up there on the school phone. Because mine is so real. So, Amy uh, does a lot of things here at Woodbury Grammar. Most all of you know that uh, Amy Thomas is uh, a bus driver, and this is Bus Driver Appreciation Month. So, we wanted to recognize a bus driver as a employee of the month. And Amy does a lot. In fact, I'm going to read something for you guys. Uh, received from her supervisor as bus driver, Ms. Lisa Black. She said, Amy Thomas, bus driver for Woodbury Grammar School, has been driving for Cannon County Schools for 25 years. Yeah. 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 Amy is also the receptionist at Woodbury Grammar School for how long, Amy? Uh, almost 25 years also as a bus driver. I think she deserves another hand for that <laughs> So she's often called to, to do double routes, and she's doing on one of those right now, I believe, correct, Ms. Black? Okay, so she, she's doing that. So it is, she's doing the double route as well as being the receptionist. And it says she also helps with ball games. So after she gets through having a long day here, she gets to travel with our athletic teams and wherever they're going. So she begins the day early and ends the day late as your employee. And so we wanted to recognize she's very dependable and she is willing to pitch in at any time to help our students and staff it has been a genuine pleasure, Ms. Black says, to work with Amy as a bus driver and as an employee of the Cannon County School System. So at this time, I'd like to present Ms. Thomas with a certificate. I'm gonna leave this in here for you. If you can, if you can have Lisa's copy of Lisa's uh, email for me. <laughs> but uh, Amy, I appreciate you and I thank you. If I see you here, let me put you here. Turn that camera. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can find that one. I can find my pencil. No, nope, no nope, pencil. <laughs> yes, sir. Ready to go, Mr. Chairman. All right, item number five. Uh, I don't see Stephanie, but I think we got enough information from her at the workshop. It's concerning the new copier for Short Mountain School. They want to switch to Canon, which is on the state bid process to the centralized finance office. Save quite a bit of money. Do I have a motion to approve? I make that motion to approve that. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second's been made. 
Call the roll. Most paid by Ms. Thomas, seconded by Ms. Mr. Mullins to approve Canon Solutions uh, America State of Tennessee contract quote, quote number 893, machine C5560, 60 PPMs, uh, black and white at 32 cents uh, a copy and the color at 35 cents a copy, fixed base $65.96, monthly estimate $148.96, with a yearly estimate of $1,787.52 on the lease. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Finn. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes and no nays. Okay, do you guys have any more questions that you'd like to ask Ms. Black over the school bus? Yeah. No questions. No questions. All right. I'll make that motion. <laughs> the motion's been made uh, to <laughs> declare the bus a surplus that are sitting at the uh, board's garage. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion's been seconded. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. Mullen, seconded by Ms. Duggan, to declare buses number 00 03. 03-25-98-09-03-11-96-06-98-29-97-01-00-04-92-93 and 0501 as surplus property to be auctioned individually and sold to the highest bidder. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. Item number seven, I think we only have one and it's at Woodland School. It's in pretty bad shape. Anybody got any questions about declaring a portable classroom surplus? No, sir. No questions. Do I have a motion to approve? No. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I have a second. Motion's been made and seconded. Motion made by Mr. McMack and City of Ms. Thomas to approve Woodland School Portable as surplus property. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Ms. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. All right, item number eight. I just have one thing I'd like to say about item number eight. It's pretty good bus bid. I think we need to put a stipulation on it. Uh, if the county comes through with the money that they promised us, if they do not, we just have to do without because we did not budget for a bus. Although we do have insurance money to help cover part of it, two thirds of it. Mr. Chairman, that fund went into, uh, that did go into this year's budget, meaning it went into fund balance, correct, Douglas? And going into fund balance, as it went into fund balance, then you would have to still do a budget amendment to the county commission for this to be done, to take that money out of fund balance and for this bus project. The commission is aware of this and has been told the $30,000 uh, is to be put on the note, is that gonna be at the November meeting is when that's going to be talked about mm -hmm. and discussed. So hopefully that'll be done. This was part of the governor's funding. It wasn't part of the CARES Act, it's part of the governor's grant funding that he gave. So. Um, my sources indicate that that is going to be done at the next uh, county commission meeting. So we would, my recommendation, certainly approve this bid, uh, either one of the two, approve the bid, and then move forward uh, contingent upon funding by the Cannon County Commission. Do I have a motion to approve? Ah, <laughs> the Bluebird bus. I think... Uh, it was a little cheaper, and it's one that Miss Black highly recommends. Okay, you should have told us that she was here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Ashley Skerlock, and I'm the bus account manager with Cumberland, Tennessee's IC dealer. In June, I sold a bus to Cannon County Schools, which is going to be delivered this month. I bid the sister bus to that and I can deliver this bus probably within 30 days. So I can deliver both at about the same time and they're matching sister buses. And they have electronic stability control and collision mitigation. 
I know I was not low bid, but I have more safety features and a faster delivery time. And I would ask for your consideration so you can use the school buses this year and with newer safety features. The other bid is not coming in until May. And mine's a brand new bus that can be used this school year. That'll match the other one y'all are getting. What was the difference in the two buses, Ms. Black? $1,809 for a bus you can use next month. This school year. The safety features. Featured on the Today Show. <laughs> I can send you the link. It's fabulous. Anybody got any questions for her? Nobody? Come on, drill me. All right, no questions. Okay, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Any discussion? No discussion. Do we need the bus this year? Or can we wait till my. Ms. Boyd? Do we need the bus in 30 days or can we wait till May? Actually, I think it's November the 5th, but I think it's the commission meeting. Since we weren't here last time that bus was, the first bus was over, was the bidding process the same? Cannon County Schools in June purchased a bus off of Bledsoe County School Bus Bid through what's called a piggyback bid purchase. It's allowed through the Tennessee Annotated Code where if the school system puts a bus out to bid, you all can buy off that bid. And I met with the auditor and reviewed the bid packet and he signed off on it. And then it was put on the June agenda. And we ordered the bus and it's being built October 22nd. So that's a new bus. Yes, sir, it's a brand new bus. And then this bus is the sister bus. Um, and it was built September 24th just a few days ago, but it's my last unsold stock unit. So I bid it um, and then um, I need to add lap and shoulder three point belts. That's a, and the cameras. So um, if you give me the verbal, I'll sign the PO and add the lap and shoulder belts, which the state of Tennessee is paying for in a grant. They're at no cost to you all. They're provided by the state of Tennessee through a grant. So you outbid it. Bluebird last time? Bluebird did not attend and Thomas did not attend. It is a 20, both of them are 2022 model school buses. They're 78 passenger <clears throat> conventional engines with 250 horsepower Cummins B6.7 with Allison transmission, 100 gallon fuel tank, air suspension. So if, if we say we went with her bid and then the commission saw that there was one cheaper. It would not fare well across the street. Okay, but that was, that was my question. Yeah. And you can't go back and, can you go back and change that? Not without rebidding. You'd have okay. to rebid everything after that point. I mean, it's not our money we're spending, so I was, and they're yeah. giving us money. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay, you, <laughs> you guys, it's, it's, you always you are have eighteen hundred dollars off. 
Eight hundred and six dollars. Nine dollars. Eight hundred and nine dollars off. It's a ninety thousand dollar bus. Yes, sir. You're gonna match that price. I'm sorry. Can you match that price? You mean can I match Bluebird's price? Yes. I'm legally not allowed in a bid. Right, so um, I'm not allowed, sir because that violates the Tennessee annotated code for purchasing, in my opinion. Now, there is an auditor somewhere that says that the school system can purchase whomever they wish to purchase from and they reserve the right to negotiate with the vendor that they consider the most advantageous bidder. But um, I feel like that's a stretch. So I'm gonna be honest and say, I can't match their price legally. Um, but you all do reserve the right to throw them out for not meeting bid spec because the bid requested it soon um, or you can say this is best for us for the delivery time or the spec so they match you all have that's y'all's decision I'm just letting you know it'll be sooner otherwise you don't have a spare and you don't get the second bus till May so um, does your bus have seat belts yes sir lap three point lap and shoulder belts How much is that grant worth? Ms. Lee, so the bus we're getting in the next few days or month or whatever that is, what is that going to go for? 99,200. Well, I mean, what are we going to use it? Oh, is that? Right. So if we have this one though, that's coming in, that's being built in October. Everyone we get is helping us with that. So the one we bought in June, I guess I'm asking that's gonna be a that will be a help us. Right. But you'll have maintenance costs on that bus that you that's really old versus a new one under warranty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have any questions for you? No questions. Y'all are doing so well with asking questions. <laughs> All right, guys. Do I have a motion? It's up to you. I just feel we're going to catch slack going across the road for an extra. I'd love to have it in 30 days. Exactly. But yeah, we're running a, a PR campaign. So we've got to keep that campaign up because unfortunately we know how the, it's not just the board, it's other people watching us. If it was our money, I'd say for sure. But. Yeah, they will, I that guarantee you, they will ask me or the chairman if I'm there in November, why didn't you go with the lowest bid? I can hear it now. Otherwise, I'd love to have the bus now because I could, we can utilize it. That's the catch-22 we're in because I would, would like to utilize that bus because we're always needing other buses. I mean, when one goes down or something happens, it's great to have that spare ready to roll. And so selling cost is something, something that you could do. You could consider rebidding, but I wouldn't probably do that with that lower bid because they will. 
conference has already closed. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. I make a motion we go with the lowest bid. I think our hands are tied on that. I make the second. Motion's been made and seconded. Call the roll. Motion made by Mr. McMack and seconded by Ms. Thomas to approve the bid of Central State bus sales for 2022 Bluebird version Type C for $87,591 contingent upon $30,000 from the County Commission to be voted on at the November 5th, 2020 meeting of the Commission. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. He's very persuasive. It's still first. Item number nine, to approve budget amendments. Would you guys like to take these separate, discuss each one, or would you like to do them together? I will say this on item number C. <laughs> I had a real tough time with this whole thing. I had a really, really tough time with sending Douglas over there. I made a world of phone calls. And every person that I talked to said the employee and all monies go with it. Still wrestled with it, still dug around, still tried to find things. In my opinion, this is part of that money. He took a pay cut if this doesn't pass. And Darlene. And Darlene. And uh, I know it's not that much money, but I, I truly feel like if this was taken to court, they'd win it. Because the employee and all money is go. And that's gonna take us up to about 108, 109,000. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman going to the centralized finance office, which I'm not happy about again, but I don't think there's anything we can do about it. And to, to update, Mr. Chairman, if I can, to yes, update the, the board, when this all came down, they all heard me talk about this in, in regards to centralized finance. Being the chairman of the financial management committee, I, I've had to look at this in about three different, three different, four different ways, really. And looking at that though, we were told by the comptroller's office that they had that they had to go. Okay, and having to go to me means the stipulation of those funds have to go to. And so what we're doing, we're just doing what we were said. When we did the uh, initial $104,000, we went through the percentages of those salaries that they had on what they do in physical services. And in doing that, we looked at that, and that's where you get the difference in the four thousand and the two thousand or two thousand dollars more for each employee is because of who went. They're grandfathered in, and my argument and what will continue to be is that you have excellent employees, darling, the twenty-five years, Douglas, eleven years. Did I get it right, darling, twenty-five. Okay, we okay. So I, I upped it just a little bit. We got twenty-four and a half in. They're like an auction, but those individuals, you can't get that anywhere else. I can't get 25 years experience in federal bookkeeping just off the street or Diane Kent as, as their boss. So to me, this rectifies it. Let's move it, let's move this thing forward and moving on and, and put two employees there and know what they're doing. Federal, federal bookkeeping is, is, is tough stuff. And you got a specialist there. That's who we. That's who this board needs, not wants. This uh, this board needs that for your protection. And Douglas, knowing the the budget the way it is, to me, it's an investment well spent. And uh, I, you know, probably across the street, we probably think it's better if we're doing it that way. And those employees do not get a uh, a, a cut in price because they didn't want to go. We didn't want them to go. They had to go. So, Mr. Chairman, I think you're exactly right. If it went to court, that's what the court would rule. So, my recommendation is to approve this and to let's move these forward and get those employees up. And they're already transferred anyway. Let's just give them the money they deserve. That's all my preaching, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Do I have a motion? Maybe I'll say that today. That's my recommendation. If you okay. want to break it down, yep. Nope. Yep. I'll make the motion. I'll, I'll second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the budget amendments. Call the roll. Motion made by Ms. Thomas, seconded by Ms. Duggan to approve budget amendments, budget amendment BOE 2021-1, budget amendment BOE 2021-2, and budget amendment BOE 2021-3. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. Now we'll go to the uh, County Commission on November the 5th. Item number 10, approve a review of board policy number three, support services 3.1003, 3 3.602. Five minutes, Mr. Curtis. Okay, I can do it quicker than that. The okay. support services are just that, facilities management, equipment and supplies management, transportation management, food service management, and insurance management. What these do, basically, these are your supports that it's not a part of personnel, it's not a part of of any other part, not a part of board policy. This is what the, the uh, TSBA has generalized saying these are the things that support your schools, whether it's building and grounds, service animals, you name it, private vehicles, contracted bus service, all of that is contained here that you support, uh, not mandated, but you support uh, what we do. And many, some of these were reviewed last year. I noticed that facilities planning uh, 11, uh, that was November 12th of 19. There's another one, district water testing. We got lead testing coming up at some, at, uh, very rapidly. We're gonna have to do lead testing for all of our schools that's coming on. So uh, uh, you see it and, and that we review these. Insurance constantly changing, uh, constantly going on. So TSBA helps us to do that. But uh, my deal is that you approve the review of these policies. That's pretty quick. That was pretty impressive. I'll make motion. a motion. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I second it. Second's been made. Call the roll. Motion made by Ms. Mr. Mullins, uh, seconded by Ms. Thomas, to approve the review of the Kennedy County Board of Education Policy, Section 3, Support Services, 3.100 to 3.602. Mr. Mayor Atkins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. All right, item number 11, approve the vision, vision, mission, and goals statement. I think most of us, except for Jennifer, sat in on that meeting. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything they'd like to change or add to? Mr. Chairman, I have uh, reviewed this with uh, supervisors, also uh, principals. Uh, they like it and uh, are love the idea, particularly of the vision going before the mission. And so just like Mr. Uh, ben Rogers or Ben uh, Torres suggested, before you can slip there, uh, Ben Torres suggested in, the, in, the, in, the, in this, y'all worked really hard on this. Principals agree, supervisors agree. I think probably every person in the central office agrees uh, that we'll just have to change my E3 logo from uh, E, uh, now it's going to be E4, E4W. So that's okay. We, we've got plenty of masks. Oh, no. <laughs> so the logo is going to have to change now. E4W now is uh, Mr. Mr. Copeland might not like the E4 now. E4W will have to be changed. Oh, there you go. Money, he needs more money in his budget. <laughs> I'd like to thank Mr. Torres for coming, for coming officially. He spent some time with us. He, he was very informative. And I would recommend if, if you guys have any questions to reach out to him, he, he, he will help. He'll point you in the right direction. Uh, there's only so much you can do, but he, he, he will always point you in the right direction. And one thing this will do is guide us as a board, as you as a board, us as a school system, will guide us in what we do every day. And I looked at this, it's on my wall in the office. It's on every press release I send out. It's on multiple emails I send out is that 
this is what we're looking at doing in the next two years. And uh, it, it is, like I say, inclusive. This will guide your strategic plan too. Remember what Mr. Torres said, uh, this will guide your strategic plan. These goals become literally your guiding part of your strategic plan. So this is something very, very important. And your, your hard work there is not going, it's gonna be paying off from here on through your term. So I hope I got in under the gun that time, three minutes. <laughs> Have a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve the vision. I second. Oh. Motion's been made and seconded. Call a roll. Motion made by Ms. Thomas, seconded by Mr. McMackins to approve the vision, mission, goals, and beliefs for 2020 through 2022. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. You know, we have had 11 items and it's been five to nothing. That's impressive. <laughs> um, I need three delegates. I had three volunteers. You guys want to raise your hand so Mr. Curtis can write them down? Yes. All right, Mr. McMackins, Ms. Duggan, and Ms. Thomas. Yes. I'll look that way. <laughs> I'm the only one not working, so that was easy. <laughs> I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion to make. Call the roll. Best motion I've heard in a long time. Uh, motion made by Mr. Fan, seconded by Ms. Mullins to elect. <laughs> to Mr. Fan and Ms. Mr. Mullins. <laughs> I got, we got to stop it. Uh, to elect three delegates for the TSBA 2020 Delegate Assembly on October 27th, 2020 at 11 a.m. to represent Cannon County. Delegates, Mr. McMackins, Ms. Duggan, Ms. Thomas. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Ms. Chairman Five eyes, no nays. <laughs> Item number 13 uh, is to approve a resolution of the Board of Education 2020-2021-01 and resolution of the Board of Education 2020 through 30-21-02. Three minutes, Mr. Curtis. Okay, this resolution, and this is probably, I think, the first time I've ever brought a resolution to the board that I know of. Uh, this resolution is after talking to State Senator Pody and also uh, State Representative uh, Clark Boyd and talking to them and, and, and doing, they would like something in their hand to take to the legislature, back to the legislature. And so many of the boards in the Upper Cumberland have adopted these resolutions. And I wanted to be on board, I wanted Cannon County to be on board and uh, you, you've read those. I hope and see that if you want me to read them, I can read them. But you see those where one resolution, the, the zero one, is in support of the basic education, the BEP, basic education program, hold harmless legislation for 2021 2022 school year. That means leave the BEP alone and go by whatever we had, the attendance that we had in uh, 2019 2020 before the pandemic. I think you've probably been reading some of the stuff coming out of TSBA in regarding this. And I think TSBA is going to support this also. To hold us harmless, this was a, this was a crazy year. 2020 has it, been a crazy year. Hopefully it will not be as bad as it has been. So that's what the first one does. Any questions on the first one? Okay, the second one is in support of a moratorium on state standardized testing for the 2020-21 school year. We are nine weeks in right now. And Ms. Black handed you a piece of paper a minute ago that had, given you in the meeting, that had our number of students virtually. And hold harmless, I mean, or moratorium means state testing. If we want to test, let's test, that's fine. But do not hold our teachers and our schools 
in, in as much accountability as we have. They've got accountability, trust me. But to, to go into standardized testing and all the st stuff about in, in, in regarding testing, when we've been through a pandemic, Dr. Melton may talk on that a little bit on that, but it, it's, it's crazy to do so. And I'm just saying to support our teachers, I want to support our teachers, when, and they are incredibly working very, very hard. Uh, throughout this deal, we've got kids on the screen, also students uh, in their classroom, and then students that pull up and, and get uh, packets or get other, you know, pull in and take advantage of our hot spots, do that. So to hold, to, to do the same thing about in, in, in that is to me is, is, is not respectful at all. And so it supports and respectfully request a moratorium on state st standardized testing and, account and accountability associated with such testing for 2020-21 school year to include end of year exams and formative assessments throughout the year. Can County School District request that if standard, state standard testing does continue in some format, we want the data. I want the data. Dr. Melton wants the data. Our principals want the data, right, Emily? I mean, you want the data. We want that. But we want the results of that testing be used as metrics of student progress rather than to determine district rankings or scoring statewide due to the disparity in learning methods that will be used across the state in light of COVID-19 and focus on recoupment of students' academic and social emotional skills while during the extended school closure. So there's your, there's your summary. And uh, I think most of these are, these are resolutions that saying, hey, this legislature, and all you're saying, legislature, take a look at this. And Mr. Pote is already gonna be taking a look at it as well as uh, Representative Clark Boyd. I talked to members of the, state, of the State House Education Committee also about this, and they are very much, particularly I question about funding on the BEP, uh, because we've lost students, but not just we've lost students, everybody in the state has lost students, everybody to homeschool. And it's just the, the nature that we live in. So you're just telling the legislature, this is what, we agree with this, and you need to look at this, is what you're telling the state legislature, which will start session in January. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? I second. Motion's been made and seconded. Call the roll. Most made by Mr. Fan, seconded by Ms. Duggan to approve the Cannon County Board of Education resolutions 2020-2021-01 in support of the BEP hold harmless legislation and 2020-2021-02 in support of the moratorium on state standardized testing. Mr. McMackins. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. No. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. We'll need, we'll all need to sign that. And I do have it, and I'll just make sure that you sign sign this before y'all leave. Thank you. It's all, all right. right. Item number 14. I'm gonna open the floor uh, for discussion here. Everybody can chime in if they want, but you guys go ahead. I'm sure somebody's got plenty to say. Freddie, has the numbers changed any from last time you told me? If, if you look at the, the listing of uh, the quarantine and viral, virtual students, active cases and active contacts, that is hot off the press. Mm -hmm. Ms. Black ran those numbers just right before she came over here. We've ran them, ran them two or three different times today. Principals have been contacted. That, that exactly. We've had a lot of students to come back from virtual to, to being on campus students or distance learning over to uh, on campus. Now, I do have some concerns. And I have some concerns. If you look at the um, email from Nurse Leslie, this is also hot off the press. You can look at today's date and you see the active cases. We have one active case at Cannon County High School, uh, four active cases at Woodbury Grammar School, we have two staff members at the CO that, that, that they are, have, have returned, praise the Lord. And so we're, we're glad, glad of that. So you can look at active contacts. Now, the difference between a case and a contact case, active cases are positive cases. They have the coronavirus. They have COVID-19. It's a positive case. They're out 10 days. The problem is you're around other people. And if you're around other people for longer than 15 minutes, then you are considered a contact. Okay, again, 
a positive case, you're exposed not a contact of a contact. We don't want to go there. But it's an active case means they've been exposed to somebody from within six feet for longer than 15 minutes. And we have one of those at Auburn. Auburn is doing great now. They're back fully going. All our staff is back fully going. Man, okay, can't get in high school. We had a, we had a, a situation where it moved up. 29 students there. We have uh, none at east side, three at Short Mountain. We have 28 active contacts at Woodbury Grammar School. Four of those are staff members. At Woodland, we have nine. One of those is a staff member. And then central office, three of those staff have, are active contacts. So we have 73 total that are active contacts right now and only six active cases. Here's my concern. We have moved since yesterday, we've gone from 44 active cases. Now we're talking about the total county here, everybody, all the total population. We've moved from 44 active cases yesterday to 52 today. So I'm seeing a trend. We went down to about 20 some odd, got in the mid twenties, stayed there for a little while. And now we have reversed that and we went through the thirties into the forties uh, this week and now into the 50s toward the latter part of the week. That concerns me. So that's where we're at in regard to that. But like I say, many, many students have returned. So you can look at Lisa's numbers that she, that she pulled for you uh, today uh, in looking at quarantine virtual students. So any question, 193, Lisa, is what we have virtual, correct? And then 68 that are also that are quarantined. So a little over, what, 200 some odd, 250 that we have that are out of on-campus learning right now. Uh, you see where the bulk of those is at. 98, Kent County High School, Mr. McMacken. So I hope that answered, answered your question there. That wasn't what I was alluding to, but I, that's good. What I was alluding to was how many school systems have had reverse course and gone back. You told me okay, 10 we, a few weeks that, that is correct. As of, as of yesterday, when I checked, 10 of those are now traditional in the state of Tennessee. 127, if my memory serves me correctly, were, were, were hybrid like we are, meaning you're doing both. You're doing, you've got a parental choice. And then, and then only three were doing all virtual. You know, if those 10 of those 10, are they comparable to our system in numbers? And the answer is that yes, those 10 are. They're not larger I'm systems. Talking about population, all. All, yeah. Population, they're in the smaller end places that haven't been impacted as much. And a lot of those 10, if, I, if I'm recollecting correctly, were city systems because their population are smaller. They have a lot smaller number of population in their schools district. So these are smaller school districts that are of the 10. But that's the only thing that concerns me because I was saying, hey, bring them, you know, and every principal I've talked to, uh, Ms. Hancock will probably represent principals here. We may have some online uh, that are there too that can, can chime in, every, just about every elementary principal, bring them back, bring them back, bring them back. I mean, that's, that's what I've heard, that bring them back is the, is the charge there. Our next meeting is November the 12th. November 12th. And well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm correct, I'm sorry. November 9th and November 10th, because you, we had those Monday and Tuesday because of TSBA. Yeah. Thank you, Derek, for, for, for correcting me. Okay. But November the 10th is our next uh, board Fall meeting. break is? Week after next. Week after October 9th, week of October 19th, yes, sir. How many, uh, uh, Ms. Black, how many of the contacts are actually out for the active cases in the school? Do we know that number? Like, because of, did they, because they send contact to someone at school, not from somebody at home. Do we know that? So 
CCHS, this one student, caused 29 students to be out. Mr. Nichols on? No? Okay. I'll find out for you there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mullins, on that. That would be a dream. What's Mr. Nichols feel about going back? Well, you heard him at it. You heard him last time. I, I That's think why I'm still, asking. I think he's still thinking we need to stay out a little bit longer. Uh, you know, they were thinking through the first semester, but uh, all my elementary folks want to come back. Bring them back. Bring them back. That's what I hear from every one of my every single elementary principal that said that. I think we. Uh, but Mr. Nichols would abide by whatever the board. I think we need to listen to the vast majority of the people that are living this day in and day out. Um, I know I, he just said that our elementary principals are all in favor of this. I wanted to let you guys know I had a large number from multiple schools of teachers contact me yesterday or today saying how appreciative they were of their day yesterday to get caught up to feel like they finally had a handle on things. Um, one school that I visited today, they, somebody said the teachers were refreshed. They were energized to be able to be what they need to be for their students. Um, I think we've got to listen to their voices. To some of them that are having still major difficulties with discipline, with, uh, they're being overworked. And I think that we've got to, we've got to listen to the mass majority. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Curtis, could I chime in here? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Loud and clear. I'm, I'm thinking you can, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Whoever that is, yeah, you are loud and clear. <laughs> it's Connie Foster. Oh, you are loud, Ms. Foster. Come on in. Come on. So we, have, we have eight students on distance learning. If we cut out distance learning, I feel certain we'll lose three of those that will have to leave our school system because of family medical issues. Um, what would that be? A $22,000 loss to our district. Um, I figured it at one point. I, I don't have that number exactly in my head. Um, and one of those families I pretty much talked into sticking with us um because they were going to go to homeschool and they didn't realize we were going to have that distance learning option so i kind of feel bad if we um, abandon it and we're kind of putting some of these families in a bond okay we have fall break on the 19th everybody will be back in class the 26th correct yes sir all right between the 26th and our next board meeting is uh, 15 days any exposure on fall break this is how that goes it would show up by that time wouldn't it uh, yeah. that's correct mr chairman i get nurse leslie on the phone on that but that's correct uh, any exposure after fall break you would start seeing that start to develop the week of the 26th and possibly the week of the second if you look at 14 days from that last day of fall break, which is the 23rd, if you count 14 days, you'd be in that second week in November. Yes, sir. And that's what they're saying, 14 days in you know, time period. And in fact, uh, pro prolonged exposures, if you're in a household where you're, somebody is positive and you're around that person all the time, they say 24 days for that. I don't know how the rest of you feel, but th th this entire thing has been a disaster. And I know we have some really good students doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And we have some students that are not. And I feel for my teachers and my principals having to do this. Um, I think as close as we are truly to fall break, I think we might need to wait and see what happens during fall break. 
I'm not saying that because of my teachers. I, I truly feel for you. And if we if we vote on it tonight, I'll be honest with you, I'll probably say, let's get rid of it. But I think we need to wait till after fall break to see what happens. I think we need to put this back on the agenda for November and put it up close to the top so we can do something. We look at our numbers at that time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I can give you weekly reports on those numbers if you'd like a weekly report and see how those come, they're coming. After fall break, we'll have 15 days to see what happens. And we'll be back here. And uh, I, I'm ready to be done with it. But I think it's a gamble right now to see what happens during fall break. I, I do. Board members, if we hadn't had that spike in the last week, I would say let's do away with it tonight. But since we had that spike, and then you're 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 getting more exposed, uh, then and you've got that exposure with fall break. I, I agree with the chairman. One thing I would suggest to, or give you as a point of information, if you look in that last page that I gave you, um, possible decision to go full traditional. You can see I wrote to Commissioner Schwinn, the Tennessee Department of Education Commissioner. And Commissioner Schwinn then got right back with me. I, I texted her, so what I did, and said, could you check my email? And she got back with me very quick today. I was very impressed with the commissioner. And uh, she uh, sent me that, and she said, I, we would not have to change. You all would not need to change your CLP, that's your continuous learning plan, unless you make changes to your remote program. So I'm not hearing making any changes to a remote program at all, except to no, and I, I don't think any of us have want to try to enforce making every child come back. I think everyone with a medical condition, a genuine medical condition, or someone at home that has a genuine medical condition, I, I don't think we ought to force those to come back, and I don't think that's what's on anybody's mind. But uh, the majority of our kids that do not have an illness, I feel like truly need to be in the classroom. But... I think fall break has got a lot of variables in it. Kids are going to go everywhere. They're going to be in a lot of places. They're going to do a lot of things. Uh, and that will give us enough time to tell what's going to happen. I'd say we put that as third or fourth item after we get through everything in the agenda next month. So when they come back from fall break, they'll have 15 days. To our next to that next meeting. No, you have ten. Well, it's the twenty-sixth, then you got a week there. That's five days, and then you've got another five days, and then the night. So, what eleven days? Is that right? Days. And then eleven school days. And then once you go there, you go to school for a week and a half, and you're out for Thanksgiving. So there's another one, two, three, five days off. Then you come back on the thirtieth of November and then you're back out in two and a half weeks for Christmas and New Year's. So you're going to do the same thing over and over. Over and over again. Yep. Um, what's point. to say that it's okay? Why guys have a hard time with this and the teachers and principals y'all may agree with me, you may disagree with me, but I've heard y'all's plead that you want the kids back in the classrooms and then I hear the next week that you don't you want to wait i've heard both sides um why is it okay for these kids to go out in october on fall break to go do whatever they want and then when they come back to school i just guys i'm having a hard time with this i mean i work in a major facility a thousand plus employees since march we've had 10 active cases I just, I say we need to go back. And if, and if that parent has a medical grandparent reason, I mean, I don't want a doctor's note. I want a doctor's reason, a thorough note of why that kid does not need to be at school because of their parent slash grandparent or that kid even. That, that's my opinion. That's my thoughts. I feel like the kids need to be back in school. All right. We're probably going to have to have a, uh, who, who would that person be, the 
medical liaison in our system that would handle personal information. I would suggest Ms. Black and myself have been doing that, but I'm not a medical professional. No, I'm not no saying means. that. I'm just saying guarding the person, but, because the but, HIPAA rules may prevent yes, us yes, knowing sir. details of their medical condition. I, I would somebody strongly, here might have that authority to look at, knowing they're not going to say anything about the records. I would recommend the school nurse, or, or RN, Ms. Leslie uh, Pelham. Leslie has been doing this anyway, constantly. She would be the one that I would say to review any kind of medical conditions, Mr. McMackins, I would suggest our school nurse. She's an RN. Yeah, you knows. know what I'm getting at. And yes, sir, I, I absolutely do. So I, she I would agree review. we should have an excuse. They should have a good excuse, but it can't be general public. It's got to be somebody in the system we can trust that will not leak that information out. And if they have a legitimate reason, then that person can say, yeah, I'll come to you. Hey, they're, they got a legitimate. What did, what did Ms. Foster say a while ago about the ones that might leave? What was their reason? I think they had medical conditions. Yeah, Ms. Foster, are you still there, Ms. Connie? I am. Um, we have one child being raised by a grandparent and has a great grandparent living in the household. And the other has, uh, uh, I believe it might be diabetes in the family, but it's something, you know, that um, in the household that they're trying to um, keep the virus away from that family member. And that's, we've all talked about that. We, we, Those would be the exception. Yeah, we all know yep. that's the exception. And that's, yep. that's something that would fly past. And you, Mr. Chairman. Did they go to school before? Right. Well, I think in your situation, you, you already know who does and who doesn't need to be there. So. Okay. Yeah, you might want to be a person that could sit in with Leslie and go, hey, you know, you have a better understanding. You two could work together on that. And I don't want no kids sick. I don't want anybody thinking that by no means. I understand kids that I'm not saying that. But when I when I go out in the public on weekends and during the week and I see high schoolers at work when they're supposed to be at school, mm -hmm. guys, I don't agree with that. I have a I have a hard time with that. I mean, we're wanting to get test grades up and they're working and not doing their schoolwork. I mean, there's a problem there. So that is the ones I'm after, the ones that need to be in school. I'm not, I don't want the kids that are gonna be affected by this virus by any way. I do not want any kids sick. Go ahead, Mr. The nine weeks ends. So it'd be a nice clean cut off. And originally when we did that, we said nine weeks mm -hmm. is what we is what we said originally when we started the whole uh, distance learning experimentation. We said nine weeks is what we decided to, to do at. So here we are at the end of the nine weeks. And I see both sides. I really do. I see uh, both sides of that. Um, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough situation. It is. Uh, again, you've got elementary folks that want them back immediately because we are losing, we are losing ground with them. I think, uh, I think that um, if they have a true medical reason to stay home, their parents probably already have the note ready from the doctor stating why they need to stay home. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, any more discussion? Am I reading this right? We only have, we actually only have four active cases in the whole system. Is that what that's saying? Not, not counting, I'm just calling kids. 
six total active cases. Uh, we have four, uh, at one at uh, the high school. Uh, and three more. Four at uh, Woodbury Grammar. One of those is staff. One of those is staff. And then two at Central Office, but they're, they're, they've been they're coming back. So four children. We got four kids out of the whole system. I mean, that's really low. I mean, we're definitely in the green. I mean, when you look at that, uh, what concerns me though is this: this number spiked to 52. If we go, if we go to 60 in the next few days, I'm very, very concerned. We had we had zero deaths in Cannon County for a long, long time, and then we haven't had two deaths. But I, we're talking about the entire active cases in the county. When you go to the dashboard. When you go to the dashboard of the health department and you look at active number of cases and that's in our our continuous learning plan that's where we say green we're, we're still in the green big time in the green we're not in the red anywhere in the red but if that continues to go up that's what concerns me if it does continue to go up how many active cases do we have to do in the yellow Is it, it would it would be yeah about 85 and then to get us in the red would be 115. 115. What's the color below green? <laughs> Dark green. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm not the art teacher. Where's our art teacher? <laughs> uh, did Mr. Nichols check in or not? He checked back in. He was having trouble finding the link. He was at a, I think a ball game too. So he's supervising the ball game tonight. Yeah, he apologized for not being here. He was just on the phone with me. We don't, any more discussion? we don't have any idea how many of that 98 at the high school actually are medical, medical. for either either active contact or act well no it's not active case it's no active case there's one active case to high school we know we have any idea how many of those are just out but not out because of some other reason that they're virtual no but a lot of those are failing none of that. <laughs> You let him in the meeting, Mr. Copeland. Okay. I think we have Mr. Nichols. Do we have? You're not seeing. Say <laughs> uh, so we don't see you. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion we go back active, full, traditional school settings. I second it. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> we get the we motion done. We get the motion done. <laughs> I'm getting excited. We, we've got to have, uh, unless we have medical. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Legit medical reasons with direct family. Not grandma that lives in Alabama. True statement. A doctor's, it has to be a doctor's, you know, excuse. The Monday after fall break. So that'd be October the 26th. Mr. Nichols, are you there, sir? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, now the board has some questions for you, and I'll turn it over to the board. Okay. Wade, did you have who was the ones that needed the question, Mr. Nichols? Have you been listening, Mr. Nichols? No, sir, I've not. I've been at a soccer game, which we won three to nothing tonight. So. Oh, great. Yay. My my question was, uh, where do you where do you stand right now on going back? full traditional after fall break i you know i'm if that's the decision of the board i'm okay with that i mean as far as going back i've got some that i talked to are you talking about even ones that have medical conditions no no okay no, would be um so are those students going to be rolled over to home homebound i guess or how are we going to handle that situation? They'll be kept virtual, Courtney, with a doctor's okay. detailed explanation. That's what the board is okay. Um, that I don't have an issue with that, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, about them coming back. Um, 
minus the, the ones that are medical. Um, I think your teachers have put in a lot of hard work. Um, and that's why I had to, when I addressed the board um, back a couple of weeks ago, that's my concern a little bit that they've worked really hard at making this work. And, you know, that that's where my concern was on that. But if, if y'all decide that we're going back, let's go back. Let's just make it happen. These kids need to be in the school building. They need to be in person. And uh, that's what we know that works. We, we appreciate those teachers doing that, putting that time in, learning this system under the adverse conditions we live under. But at the yes, same sir. time, this might take a little relief off of them. Yes, sir. And it, it but, you know, then again, you're still going to have those, you know, right now, I think my current numbers is at 94, 98 on virtual still. Is that correct? Yes. Um, okay. With that being said, you're still going to have 40 or 50 that are virtual. Um, if that many, maybe not that many, but uh, so they're still going to be doing this work. Um, you're going to have 40 or 50 with medical. That's what I, I don't know if it'll be that. I don't know if it'll be that many. Um, that's just a, you know, a guesstimate there. I would think closer to 30 to 40, I think would, would come up with a medical reason why they need to be, whether it's legit or not they'll come up with a medical reason. And I'm just speaking open and honest on that. This is for you, Mr. Courtney, and all the principals. Do we have any kids that are virtual that are playing school sports? I do. I do actually have some that are doing cross country. Um, currently, they had also had played volleyball, um, but their season is over. Okay, Mr. Nichols, we've got a motion on the floor. I'm going to read this. Mr. McMackens, you made the motion. Okay, is that right? Yes. To go back to full traditional on October 26, 2020, with the exception of those with a doctor's detailed explanation of quarantine due to COVID-19. Is that okay with you? Is that your motion? I want to make clear this is not something that uh, I thought of. I'm conveying the wishes of what we have heard from those who have an opinion in a leadership position. Okay, I want to make that clear. I'm not, I'm not standing on my soapbox saying that's what we got to do. This is what we've heard from our employees. Okay. You okay with that? Yes. You okay with that? I'm all right. All right, motion to be made and second. And we're gonna have this way too. I will have Miss Leslie to review the, the doctor's detailed explanation. When I send out a press release on this tomorrow, I will I will say to parents, and I will put a bright arrow, will be a bright arrow out also that states that all students will return unless you have a detailed doctor's detailed explanation for your quarantine that you would return on um, on uh, October the twenty sixth. One thing that we have to, you know, you have to be careful because if, if you turn right around and don't put the quarantine in there, then that's where you really will get. It'll really come come to bite you. And if we still do this, if they get quarantine, they can still go virtual. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, they'll probably demand that they go right. to right. virtual on that. Ms. Okay. Julie, I might ask of these that are, if you come to Mike just for a second, that I would ask uh, Ms. Julie in regard to this, Real quick, on special ed, how many of these 98 are special ed that, uh, that you're having right now that are virtual? I don't want to put you on the spot, but can you give me an approximate, an approximate number of the, of, the, of, the, of the, no, of the total, the total for the district. I said 98, that's high school. Of the 193 that we have right now, the 68 that are quarantined, how many of those might be our special uh, education? We started off at the beginning with about 37. We dropped down to 34, and I think we've had a few more to come back, so right around 30-ish. Um, but not all of them are the, the medically fragile kiddos either. They're like everybody else that chose that virtual option. Um, you know, for maybe somebody at home, 
as issues that they're trying to, you know, protect somebody at home, but not all of them were had to be medical needs, medical charges. So if you're looking at special ed, approximately 30 some odd out of, out of uh, you know, 250, that's not bad uh, at all, in my opinion. So those are the ones I'm concerned about too with learning loss, not having those specialized services that, that special education provides. I'm very concerned about that. And, you know, my teachers, just as the general ed teachers, they worked hard at making sure those kiddos had the materials at home that they would have in the classroom and trying to do the Googles and, and get the interventions. And that, that's very difficult trying to do an intervention Someone who, who's and we've heard some of the some of the concerns special education has also given about learning loss and, mm -hmm. and those that are not getting the services that they need. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Mr. You gonna put that wording in there for her? For her. So should I? I'll, I'll, let me review the motion if I can, Mr. Chairman. It's, it's your motion, Thank you. You want me to read the motion? Yeah. Okay, to go back to full ver, ver, uh, full traditional on October 26, 2020, with the exception of those with a doctor's details explanation or quarantine due to COVID-19. Would that suffice special ed, that motion? It would, but my, again, my question, I just want to be clear, is although they didn't have to go through the record, but they could go through the I think you should work with her. If they're special ed, then we'll have it to you. Yes. Is that okay? Since it's special ed, and that's what you're over, I would prefer you and Nurse Leslie if you want to. Derek, I'd like to thank you about the. I was just looking at fall break, and I didn't realize. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm here to get it. They're all You'll be right. back the first year. year. I, I, I was. Thank you. That, that New Year's. Good thought. Call the roll, Mr. Curtis. Just making me some notes here, Mr. <laughs> Just for saying. Motion made by Mr. McMackins, uh, seconded by Ms. Thomas, to go back to full traditional on October 26, 2020, with the exception of those with a doctor's detailed explanation or quarantine due to COVID-19. Explanation, Nurse Leslie will review all medical uh, doctor's details explanations, and Ms. Julie Benson to review all special education students' requests. Mr. McMackens. Aye. Ms. Duggan. Aye. Mr. Mullins. Aye. Ms. Thomas. Aye. Chairman Fan. Aye. Mr. Chairman, five ayes, no nays. We'll get to work on this uh, immediately in the morning and uh, we'll get the word out and be prepared for explanations to be submitted via email to Nurse Leslie and to uh, Ms. Julie Benson in regard to special education. Leslie on. She's not on. Is, is Nurse Leslie? She's not on. Okay. But I can get you her phone number if we need it. <laughs> I'm just saying you better warn her, please. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> she will be. I, I will do that before the press release. Ms. Duggan. <laughs> All right. Our safety report. Uh, we didn't get a lot of information on that, though. We've got somebody we need to be thinking about in trouble that normally does that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Curtis. Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to go on record for the board. Bonnie Patterson is one of the sweetest ladies and hardest workers I've ever known in my life. And she's lost her husband uh, due to a stroke. Most of y'all know that. And uh, the funeral is tomorrow at one o'clock. Uh, I conveyed our condolences as the director of schools to her today at the funeral home. And uh, she appreciates all of you. She said, you've got a board meeting to go to. There, there she is thinking about other people. And that's, that's who Bonnie Patterson is. And so when one hurts, we all hurt. We hurt as a district and uh, we, we pray for her family. I ask you for your thoughts and prayers to Miss Bonnie in the coming days as a person who's lost a spouse, I can relate. And I told Bonnie that anything we could do as a system, I said, I do not want to see her back until the 26th at the earliest. And uh, she laughed when I said that. But, uh, you know, Bonnie's very special for, for us, and I know that, that she appreciates your thoughts uh, for her. Um, other than that, Mr. Chairman, I have just one thing. Uh, I passed back to you. We had some bad news. We had good news and we had bad news. One of the bad news is I received a packet this morning from Tennessee Risk Management. I get, you have a copy of that. It looks like this with uh, TNRMT on it. 
Ms. Emily, I'm sorry, but uh, they're not going to want to pay for your gym floor. So what I would suggest we look at there, what they were going to do in their, in, their, in their process, and they said, well, your loss is by wear, tear, gradual deterioration, rust, wet or dry is where they got us. We should have, but we didn't know about it. What we're talking about is on the gym floor in Woodbury Grammar School, underneath the bleachers, it has rotted greatly. So Tennessee Risk Management, their insurance adjuster, he said, go ahead and replace the whole gym floor. Well, I don't think we need the whole gym floor replaced and re redone. I really don't, but I think we could probably get a contractor up to look at that to just to repair that area that is below those bleachers, move those bleachers out, and then repair that area, and then leave the gym floor alone, and then resurface that at, at some point. It's probably you're getting close, and Miss Miss Emily, you might want to come to the mic and talk about that. I'm gonna put you on the spot just a little bit on that. The gym floor here at Woodbury Grammar was it re? When was the last time, if you know, when that was re resurfaced? We may have to get some coaches involved, Miss Pam Forrest, or been done most probably about six years ago I was here and I've been here for 14 so I know it was done between that time but it was an insurance claim at that point and um, this is from the roof leaking it was running down the sidewall and going behind the bleachers and we were told at first not to do it because we we're waiting on the roof to be, get fixed well now the roof's fixed and so now they're not covering it is that what <clears throat> you're telling me yeah that's what they're telling me in this detailed explanation uh, at, at some point um, what the, what the bulk of this claim, it was $44,000, members of the board, uh, to do it all. And over half of that, $28,951.14, was on to sand and finish the wood floor with natural finish. It's not really about the repair. Add painting, painting for the game lines and stripes, $6,833 in, in regard to that uh, for paint. On those, on those lines. So you're looking at the bulk of this, redoing the floor. The R and R maple floor, number two or better, no finish was $543. And the wood flooring installer, uh, they said eight hours to, to do that job was $440. So you're looking at less than $1,000 to repair that area. It's the refinishing and repainting is the bulk is the bulk of the, of, of the claim. So depending on how our capital outlay happens, surely we can find $1,000 to fix that floor at some point. Just saying, just, just staying there, uh, as, the, as the kids say. This is a five by five. And they were, they were charging $1,000 to remove the bleachers to get in there to, to can we look and at that, it? You can look at it. You will have to squeeze behind the bleachers to get back there to see it. But yes, <laughs> you can look at it tonight. There are some good pictures on, in that packet, Mr. Chairman, too, that you can. It's right there. That you can look at. It. You can look at it too, Mr. Chairman. But that's the bad news. But I'm saying, if it's only cost a thousand, you know, around a thousand dollars to to do that, um, and, and they're just to repair that floor. I just don't like that rotten wood sitting there. It's not good for the floor. Termite, I'm not saying anything about termites, but I, I don't know if there have been, ver been vermin is what it says there or whatever. But if we can do that and get it to where that, that is fixed, I think Miss Emily would be probably pretty well pleased with that. So was it, was that a roof, roof leak? It was a roof leak, yes sir. That moved across the, the back behind that, that wasn't, it was reported, but not, nothing much, that was before my time, but uh, Emily, you might want to say that was reported. So this was how many years ago when it first happened? Emily, uh, how many years? This book, it was before my time, so that that, it, that that leak was started. I found out about it right after I became when I became director in yeah about twenty seventeen. Uh, I became director in December 27. I found out about this. It was in the 2018. So it was, never, it was never tarped. It was never put a bucket. They said, we're just going to let it rot. Yeah, and there were some other leaks in the floor too, Mr. McMackins, that they would address because, but this one, 
would run across down the wall and he don't even really know it's there until. Miss Pam was very digital and didn't about doing that. Uh, but that's the, that's the bad news in the report today is that I got this today and I wanted you to be aware of it. Um, that, that, that Tennessee Risk Management was not going to do that. They've been very good to us, but they weren't good to us on that. I guess they wanted to pay the, and we still, we still haven't heard anything uh, on the, uh, the, the wood, Woodbury Grammar Roof metal part. I've not heard anything from Tennessee Risk Management. Should hear something about any day was a supplementary claim, you know, we had with the other insurance guy that came in and did that and resubmitted. I did get a call from travelers and an email from travelers who is the insurer of TS Risk Management, and they were they were looking at the claim. Douglas, did I forget anything on that? I think I've got it all. Do you know how much it's supposed to be for? How much is that check supposed to be? I just get some people to teach you. <laughs> but, but the problem with that is that when we've looked at it again, to fix the metal roof like it should be done and replace all that's going to cost about $800,000. That's what they're looking at right now is to consider all of that because we brought in the insurance specialist and the insurance specialist then went back and used the same software program that their adjusters from Tissy Risk Management did and they were re-looking at it again. So I think we got their attention when we added that much more onto that, the damage, the hail damage, which I think the intent of this board is to make sure that's, that money is utilized for repair of that roof. At least the old board was in, in wanting that to be done. Correct, Mr. Chairman? I can't say that. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's been a while though, we should have, something should have been worked out, that's six months. Yeah, we've been working on this thing for, we discovered the, the, we actually discovered the damage to the Woodbury Grammar, the metal part. And we're talking about the metal part, the flat part that we're under right now, that was, that was a given. That had been looked at by several different ones. Um, and then Mike Ford looked at it, you're the one who talked to you uh, during the workshop. He's the roof consultant. And, and I'd said, Mike, I've had, a, I've had one of your, uh, the bidders to say, I think you need to look at your metal roof. You've got some damage there. And uh, the problem is that damage is a little bit older damage. And so I had them to look at it. And then he said, I think we need to get this other guy involved in this who, who, who that's his job is to do roof claims. That's all he does. He's a specialist in the insurance industry that does roof, cl roof claims. And so it's not gonna cost you anything. He said, I'll get him to come and do it. He traveled down here and looked at it. And then we resubmitted that to, Tennessee Risk Management, and not we've not heard. And I've got email evidence that we submitted that, so we know that that was done. And so usually Tennessee Risk Management has been pretty good, but I think they were that kind of knocked them self, so they had to go back and resubmit that to Travelers. Is what they had to do. The insurance, the their insurer, the insurance company's insurer. But uh, I'll let you know as soon as anything on that. I will let you know immediately via email. My three minutes? Yeah. I get three more minutes. No. That's what you just said. I got three more minutes. No, no but I, I appreciate everybody's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everybody's hard work. Our teachers are dedicated. By the way, one one special announcement. You probably already know. I've already sent that. The commissioner of education will be with us, as well as Senator Pody and Representative Boyd will be touring some schools here in Cannon County on November the 12th. So I'll be talking to uh, principals 
at our district leadership meeting on Monday. And so we will be selecting the two lucky, well, Cannon County High School is going to be one of them, Mr. Nichols, so be ready. Uh, they want to come to Cannon County High School. And so uh, one of our other elementary schools will be focused by the Commissioner of Education. So there's my principal's a heads up. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. You good? You done? Pause. For now. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd like to take just a moment to let everybody, I don't think any of us realize how much Ms. Patterson does for our community uh, outside of school, the way she's involved with kids, and not just kids, but the she tries, she's very compassionate for our lower income children or kids that are on the threshold of, you know, making really, really bad decisions. She she does things, it's just outstanding. It's hard to put into words how much she's dedicated her life to helping everyone. So y'all consider what she's going through for a while. Think about how much she does for everybody and uh, try to be a little lenient on her for a while. I bet she's back before you told her. <laughs> Or not, I just know her. Um, <laughs> everyone's going to go on fall break. Um, your teachers and principals, central office staff, enjoy yourselves. Try to be careful. Don't bring anything back, please. Um, let's try to push this forward. Um, let's try to get back on as normal of a scale as we can because I know this has been awful on everybody. It, it's, it's just been awful. Keep pushing, keep trying, and we'll get through it. Thank you, that's all I have. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Motion to make. A second. <laughs> I think I think I'm going tomorrow morning. Kind of like to go that you can't go. I kinda like to go in your stead. I want to tell her I'm they're not just ready.